Scott Brown here and in today's exciting video we are talking hammers. I've been using this hammer for about a month now and so far so good but I thought I would go back to the first hammer that I started with 15 years ago and that is the S-Wing curved claw standard blue handle hammer. The advantage of the curved claw is that it gives you leverage for pulling out nails. So it's a good starter hammer. It's only like maybe a hundred bucks New Zealand. And when you're starting, you're, you're often making mistakes. So you're probably pulling nails out more than you would be if you were a more experienced builder. Another advantage of these handles is that they're steel. So they're virtually, you just can't break them. If you're missing, you're hitting things, you're whacking it around, you're, maybe you don't have much finesse. This is a great hammer to start with. So I had this hammer for like 10 years before I changed it. Served me well. Then I went on to the S-Wing Rip Claw Hammer. Very similar to the other S-Wing, other than the claw is flatter and the handle is a leather handle, tightly woven around. So this was my second hammer and the only reason I bought it is because I was working and living in the UK and I needed a hammer. So I saw this on Amazon it was a similar price, it was like, I think it was like 80 pounds maybe, about 80 pounds. I just liked the look of the rip claw. I'd seen a lot of builders on, online using rip claw hammers and I thought I'd try it out. And it's been a revelation for me. Prior to this, didn't even think about the, the hacking abilities that you had with a, with a rip claw. You can just like pull timber off walls very easily, you just throw it in, you can split timber, you can... It does have less leverage when you're pulling out nails, but it hasn't been a problem for me. You've got bars, you know, you've got nail pullers and, and it might just be me, but I think it's just a better built hammer than the uh, original S-Wing that I used. If this is so good, why did I change it? Well, these two hammers have something in common. They're both made of steel all the way through and therefore they're very heavy. And I carry my hammer, wait, well, I carry my hammer here like this. So to have a heavy anchor point right there in the middle of your back, it's no good. So I was trying to think of ways. So I've been trying to think of ways to lessen that weight in the back there, but I still wanted to keep the rip claw because I like it so much. And that brought me to this sucker here. It's an expensive hammer. It cost me like 300 New Zealand dollars. Very pricey, but the fact that it's titanium means it's super light. Like this compared to this. Honestly, it's just not even. And this, it must be half the weight. The wooden handle, it makes it a lot lighter. Apparently it's less vibration as well. And I kind of noticed that. It might just be because I knew it as I was. But the, the weight is completely different. It says 16 ounce. So it's a 16 ounce. Whereas I think these are like 19 or 20 ounces. As a builder using this every day, so far so good. Hanging in my tool belt is just not even, I can barely feel it. The power in it, the extra long handle and the leverage that you get from it. The, the long handle also helps with leverage when you're pulling stuff up. Has a little nifty nail puller thingy there as well that helps. Has a nifty little magnet thing here so you can get your nail started. Just like that. And then the nail started and then you keep nailing. I've watched other videos of guys who've had this hammer for a while and they said that when they were really working hard, they'd go for a handle about every three months. So that's something to consider if you want to get a hammer like this, you're paying for the, you're paying for the head of the hammer more than anything. You've got to be willing to replace the handle every now and then. But that could be a fun project, you know, unbolting this and then making your own special made handle, choosing the wood. Another thing to consider is this is quite a big hammer. It's actually, I think it's designed as like a framing hammer, so it's good for us. We just like, I think in the US they call them general contractors. We just say builders. And we do framing one week and plasterboard today. And next week we'll be doing finishing carpentry. So we do sort of all round work. And a hammer like this is fine for that. So yeah, to recap, this hammer, great starter. You won't break it. You can pull nails out easily, pretty cheap. Pretty sweet. This one, this is good as well. Similar to the last one, you're not gonna break it. You've got that rip claw, so if you wanna try a rip claw hammer out, it's a pretty inexpensive way to try that out. But if you're looking for something lightweight, if you're looking for a badass hammer, 
take it to the next level. Take it to the next level. Get this one. In fact, this one's so cool that part of here. Which one? Oh, this one. You think you'll still get one, bro? Yeah, I'll get one for sure. Better than the uh, blue handle S-Wing? Yeah, I feel like you can like break into people's houses much more easy than... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a consideration. Um, we we are safety goggles. And remember kids, always wear your safety goggles. So I hope this has been helpful. If you're buying a hammer, here are three hammers to consider from me, a builder who has been using them for a while. Any questions? Comment below. And like if you like the video and dislike if you don't. See you on the next episode.